All right, so where we left off was right after they came back from doing their laundry and they went to the library and then they went to, um, they were hiding in the bathrooms and they heard that the statue was getting moved. So um, that's where we left off. And they are about to go take a bath in the fountain of, at the restaurant, in the museum. So that's where we're starting off. Lady Claudia and Sir James quietly walked to the entrance of the restaurant. They easily climbed under the velvet rope that meant that the restaurant was closed to the public. Of course, they were not the public. They shed their clothes and waded into the fountain. Claudia had taken powdered soap from the restroom. She had ground it out into a paper towel that morning. Even though it was freezing cold, she enjoyed her bath. Jamie too enjoyed his bath for a different reason. When he got into the pool, he found bumps on the bottom, smooth bumps. When he reached down to feel one, he found that it moved. He could even pick it up. He felt its cool roundness and splashed his way over to Claudia. Income, Claudia, income, he whispered. Claudia understood immediately and began to lose Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll bring it back, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, Claudia understood immediately and began to scoop up bumps she had felt on the bottom of the fountain. The bumps were pennies and nickels people had pitched into the fountain to make a wish. At least four people had thrown in dimes and one had tossed in a quarter. Someone must be very rich to have tossed in this quarter. Someone very poor, Claudia corrected. Rich people only have penny wishes. Together, they collected $2.87. They couldn't hold more in their hands. They were shivering when they got out, drying themselves as best as they could with paper towels, also taken from the restroom. They hurried into, the into their pajamas and shoes. They finished their preparations for the night, took a small snack, and decided it was safe to wander back into the great hall to look again at their angel. I wish I could hug her, Claudia whispered. They probably bugged her already. Maybe that light is part of the alarm. Better not touch, you'll set it off. I said hug, not bug. Why would I want to bug her? That makes more sense than to hug her. Silly, shows how much you know. When you hug someone, you learn something else about them, something important. Jamie shrugged his shoulders. Both looked at Angel a long time. What do you think, Jamie asked. Did he or didn't he? Claudia answered. A scientist doesn't make up his mind until he's examined all the evidence. You sure don't sound like a scientist. What kind of scientist would want to hug a statue? <laughs> Claudia was embarrassed, so she spoke sternly. We'll go to bed now, and we'll think about the statue very hard. Don't fall asleep until you've really thought about the statue and Michelangelo and the entire Italian Renaissance. And so they went to bed. But lying in bed just before going to sleep is the worst time for organized thinking. It's the best time for free thinking. Ideas drift like clouds in an undecided breeze, taking first this direction, then that. It was very difficult for Jamie to control his thoughts when he was tired, sleepy, and lying on his back. He never liked to get involved just before falling asleep. But Claudia had planned on their thinking, and she was good at planning, so think he did. Clouds bearing thoughts of the Italian Renaissance drifted away. Thoughts of home and more thoughts of home settled down. Do you miss home? He asked Claudia. Not too much, she confessed. I haven't thought about it much. Jamie was quiet for a minute. Then he said, we probably have no conscience. I think we ought to be homesick. Do you think mom and dad raised us wrong? They're not very mean, you know. Don't you think that that should make us miss them? Claudia was silent. Jamie waited. Did you hear my question, Claude? Yes, I heard your question. I'm thinking she was quiet a little while longer. Then she asked, have you ever been homesick? Sure. When was the last time? That day dad dropped us off at Aunt Zell's when he took mom to the hospital to get Kevin. Me too, that day, Claudia admitted. But of course, I was much younger then. Why do you suppose we were homesick that day? We've been gone much longer than that now. Claudia thought, I guess we were worried. 
boy, had I known that she was going to end up with Kevin, I would have known why we were worried. I remember you stuck your thumb and carried around that old blanket the whole day. Aunt Zell kept trying to get the blanket away from me so that she could wash it. It stank. Jamie giggled. Yeah, I guess homesickness is like sucking your thumb. It's what happens when you're not very sure of yourself. Or not very well trained, Claudia added. Heaven knows we're well trained. Just look at how nicely we've managed. It's really their fault we're not homesick. Jamie was satisfied. Claudia was more. I'm glad you asked about homesickness, Jamie. Somehow I feel older now, but of course that's mostly because I've been the oldest child forever and I'm extremely well adjusted. They went to sleep then. Michelangelo, Angel, and the entire Renaissance waited for them until morning. And that's the end of chapter five. All right.